and talk a little bit more about um, uh, about about the course and mystics uh, and enlightened teachers. And um, I mean, every every system is valid and uh, of, of dealing with things. There's many ways of dealing with things. There's therapy. There's twelve steps. There's churches. Uh, I mean, this group is more, more towards um, enlightenment uh, and. Um, I think you know, and the, myst and the mystics, and this is. I think, uh, in, I mean, like uh, some people have heard me share about this uh, quite a lot. Who come regularly to the group? Well, what's the power of of clearing some information, or clearing a belief from consciousness? Completely clearing uh, a belief system from the consciousness of the ego. And what kind of effect does that have? And then and. Just to show, and I, th I think uh, this kind of work is enormously powerful, extremely powerful, the work uh, that uh, The Course in Miracles and everything. So there's a guy you can look him up on, on YouTube, uh, Dr. Hugh Len, and many of you know about him, Dr. Hugh Len, and, um, and he's quite famous and he's, 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 he's written about, and this is documented, so this is not airy-fairy stuff. So. When you, uh, this is a guy who's a mystic, I, I mean, I'm not an expert on him, and someone here is, so they can correct me, but essentially what he does, what a mystic does, is they clear their, they clear their consciousness, or they forgive the data, or they let go of their perceptions of what they perceive in the world, okay? So, so here's a guy, here's a mystic, and when we get up to the mystics, we're talking about people like saints or enlightened teachers or Buddha or Christ or whatever. Uh, what is the power of doing work at, that, at such a deep level to absolutely eradicate or clear uh, all, all the belief systems? I mean, you could say even clearing belief systems, if you forgave everything within the ego, that would clear it. Or if you let go of every attachment held within the ego, every thought and every attachment to all that's held within you, and that would create 100% uh, clearing and the enlightened presence. So Dr. Hugh Lenz just clears the data. So he, this, is, this is a prison in Hawaii with uh, violent criminals, something like violent criminals, people who killed people, really, really dark things. And, and Dr. Hugh Len was given the files, you know, this guy is an axe murderer, this guy likes running people over with his car, whatever. And he didn't. He didn't actually go in and talk to these uh, to these uh, to these criminals in the prison in Hawaii. He just got he got the files and he did his process, which you can see on online. But uh, he he forgave the criminals for what they did. He cleared his data so that his belief systems and his perceptions around it were totally eliminated from his consciousness, hundred percent eradicated. I mean, for example, let's pretend it's something like this. So. Criminal, um, I don't know, um, axe murdered several people while <laughs> going shopping. I don't know what it was. So he'll see that, and then he'll he'll clear the data, he'll clear his perceptions by doing something along the. It could be something like this, uh, dear father. Whatever data or memories have manifested uh, this perception of this man killing all these people, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. So he. Um, he takes ownership that this data, I would say he's kind of taking ownership that this data, this false data exists within the collective of humanity. So he's just totally releasing it, forgiving it, and giving it up to grace or to God. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And uh, the whole prison, everyone got well and they closed the prison down. Okay, so that's like a real story of not meeting the people and giving them individual therapy or just clearing the perceptions, uh, clearing the data of what he perceives. Because actually, and that would tie in with the Course in Miracles, that this world is a dualistic illusion created out of the origination of, uh, the, uh, of the, the birth of the ego, which is the idea of fear and separation. So if you clear that idea or, or clear your belief in the idea that se separated individuals and in a world of fear and separation exists, from your consciousness, and you go into those sublime spiritual states of presence, or those infinite states, not just that the individual becomes enlightened, but the power that's released to clear um, the, you could say, you could clear, clear the, the negative karma, 
within uh, within the collective, you know, this nightmare of of the world. That that power radiates out into the world, and healings, the the miraculous healings are possible. And this this happens commonly with saints. People come along with cancer and, uh, in front of a saint, and it disappears. That's because of the clearing. They're so pure in their consciousness. They've eliminated. You know, they've forgiven. They've released the attachments or they've cancelled the belief that it's even real, and they've just 100% eliminated. That's the enormous power uh, that's done. And, and Hawkins did a bit of research. Like one enlightened teacher counterbalances the negativity of uh, millions of people in negativity. Just one, you know, one guy sitting under a palm tree uh, in an enlightened state, it's like thousands of people are not committing suicide. Thousands of people are not getting angry. So. That's the power of just releasing 100% of the, the belief or the data or the ideas of, that, of, of separation, of limitation, of duality that are held within the ego. I, I myself, kidney failure gone, cancelling the belief in it. It's not real. God did not create it. It doesn't exist. Just doing that. I, my truth is infinite, timeless. Uh, you know, it cannot be touched by anything that can harm or, or any degradation, or anything born of fear and separation. And the kidney failure, this, you know, kidney failure, you know, there was a miracle, there, were, you know, um, there was a transplant, the um, cancelling belief in uh, gout and asthma, they also disappeared. I was discharged from those. So if, if there's enormous power in cancelling and affirming the truth that one's true nature is infinite, timeless, uh, and cannot be touched by the world of duality. So I just wanted to get to um, relatives. And I, I've also written a book called, and it's, not, it's not particularly a plug, but it is a plug, mm -hmm. but I've written a book, Bulletproof Peace, and I, I have a story in there. And it's the, like this thing of, like, there was, um, there was a lady, I was going to the, a spiritual group, and, and I like to use the word God a lot. And this lady didn't like the word, he, to hear the word God. So, you know, and I, 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 I have an ego. So she didn't like, you know, she would get really angry every time I said the word God. And then my ego reacted because I wasn't going to stop saying God. So it, was, <laughs> so it was one of those things, you know. So there was animosity. And I just did the forgiveness, cancelling of beliefs on it. And there was this anger, you know, like I'm not going to be stopped from being who I am. And so, and, 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 and also, so anyway, but... It wasn't, I didn't want to confront her or tell her not to be who she was. I just cleared the energy. I cleared my perception. I felt, also we'll be doing here later, hopefully we'll have time, feel the feelings and the observer. These are some, some tools to release any energies or repressed emotions that are in. And we'll be doing the counseling beliefs to release any thoughts. So I just did all of this work. And one day I woke up, and this could be doing with relative. When you release all the emotions around it through feel the feelings and you do the forgiveness or you do the counseling of beliefs. And I, I woke up one day and it was like all the anger was gone and I felt just peace and there was nothing there. If I saw her there would probably just be love and acceptance, nothing else. And that day I went and there she was at the group and she came up to me and we hadn't spoken. We just had angry looks at each other all the time. All this time <laughs> see. But neither of us actually spoke to each other. But, um, and she came up to me and she said, Sabir, you've taught me a spiritual lesson. I hadn't spoken to her anything. And she said, oh, by the way, I'm leaving the country. And she, was, she, she went to live in another country. And that was the power, not for me speaking to her and telling her to leave the group, but just by clearing my energy, you know, something happened. And, she, and for some reason, the universe took her out of the country. So... That's the, that's the power. So if you have, um, so I always share these two things, like if you're having relative problems or problems at work with your bosses, or if you're having problems around coffee shops, or whatever it is, it's like to feel out the repressed energies. I mean, you can speak, but what, remember, if you speak from anger, while you still have anger in you, and still have judgment in you, um, the, um, generally speaking, when you speak with the energy of anger and judgment, um, usually the universe has a response to that. Yes? So that's fine. You know, it's, I mean, everyone can be who they are. 
But in my experience, when you clear all your projected fear and anger and resentment, that's usually when the big miracles occur. Otherwise, it's usually a little bit, it can be like if you clear 50% of your anger and 50% of your fear, and then you communicate with someone, usually it's more difficult. There's not the effortless, miraculous result. It's like, I think you've done this wrong, and then they'll say, well, I don't, I don't agree, I've done it wrong, so there's a bit of a negotiation. But mega miracles happen when you fully clear the energy. So if there was problems with a relati uh, relative or family or they're doing things that um, you can speak to them by all means if that feels appropriate. But also I'd be vigorously doing uh, what we'll be doing later here of just sitting with any emotions that get brought up and just allowing them to be experienced and released and just cancelling any beliefs. Like um, I cancel my belief that this relative is treating this relative unfairly. Uh, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or, um, Can I ask you? Yes. So when you say that cancel yeah. belief in that, but, um, and I know like, I've been here so many times and I know I've heard this and stuff, yeah. but how, I cancel my belief in it, but what about if it's happening? Okay, thank you for asking that question because um, Here's, here's the thing which you may or may not agree, but I, I'm, you know, like when I, um, when I had kidney failure, and, uh, but I've also had mystical experiences with enlightened teachers. When I had kidney failure, um, what, I, what I knew was that when your ego no longer believes in something, then um, it's like, when I believe in something, The Course in Miracles also talks about it. It talks about cancer. In Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, it says, uh, you can say, uh, God did not create cancer, so it is not real. That's stated in A Course in Miracles in Lesson 14. But it says some of these beliefs are individual belief systems, and some of these are from the collective. These are like collective mass insanities that humanity holds as a thing. So, so, okay, so, like if, if I was so, you sort of see it like when you, actually none of, none of the limiting ideas or the suffering or the death or, or the injustices that you see are actually happening in truth. They're happening in this, in this perceptual dualistic uh, manifestation. But if you say that the truth is when you're in the sublime experience, that's the truth. And when you're identified with your ego, this is part of one's individual insanity or part of the collective insanity. Yeah. So then, <clears throat> to totally refute it, you'd be refuting um, your own individual belief, or, but you'd probably, if it's a shared belief, you'd be chipping away at the collective belief system that this is occurring. Yes? You with me? Is that making sense? I think I, I lost the very last sentence. Okay. So... <clears throat> Depending so on could you perhaps give an, an example to so say if one relative is perhaps uh, physically abusing uh, a child or a, a, a spouse? Yes. And I might think that to me is that relative is hurting that other relative. Yes. Which is a belief and taps into the collective experience yes. of what we deem right or wrong or abusive. So could you explain in that sure. circumstance how... Sure, absolutely. So it doesn't doesn't negate, you know, saying what one thinks is appropriate, you know, in the situation. But in terms of releasing one's uh, how one is holding it in the ego. So yeah, if it's appropriate, uh, if someone's being attacked, to call the police, absolutely. But I'll definitely keep cancelling it and clearing my perceptions around it because these kind of belief systems which are held within the collective are. Mm. So, like when, um, so uh, the example that I've given is actually that's a really good example because the Dr. Hugh Len example of these violent criminals. So, if you ha can imagine like a prison full of violent criminals and someone just sitting down and forgiving them and clearing the data, but what he's doing is clearing the karma from the collective consciousness. So, he's forgiving. And so when someone at, at a very high level of consciousness lets go of that data, it has an in... Because 
what, when you get to these higher states of consciousness, you realize that actually there is a universal connection between all of humanity. There's a oneness. There, there is a light. But it is the individual ego's attachment to thoughts of um, limitation uh, that create this darkness, which then creates um, uh, egos acting out of separation, causing harm to others. So once you go into the light and you clear away these perceptions, then it's like great light is emitted. And in, you know, obviously it depends on the level of advancement of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the person. But in Dr. Huslen, he's a very advanced, what I'd call a mystic. He's gone to the level of sainthood. So when he just forgave the data, so he, he, he talks about um, clearing the data. So taking 100%, he talks about taking 100% responsibility for, for the perceptions. So he just clears that so it, it, so it doesn't exist within his consciousness. And the whole prison, all those prison, prisons got well. So, so that's the power. And if you believe it, you don't allow the light in. You don't la allow that healing light to emit out into the universal consciousness and clear, clear one's individual perceptions of unforgiveness and, and clear the collective karma. Is it guaranteed? No. But, um, but uh, in, in Dr. Hughes Len's case, I mean, one guy not seeing the prison and the whole prison getting well is a pretty powerful, uh, powerful demonstration. I mean, you know, nothing was documented with um, Jesus. Uh, of the power of being at that level of consciousness to the people around him. Nothing was probably demonstrated with Buddha, but I think this is a, just a, a modern day, but I'm sure the miracles that happened around Buddha and Jesus through complete forgiveness or complete releasing of attachments was equally powerful. So, but if you believe, you know, it's like to say, if I hold on to attachment 55%, or if I hold on to an unforgiveness, 95% would I allow the light in, you see. So to get to those advanced levels, you'd be releasing it completely. Does that answer the question? I'm not sure. I'll probably have to think about sure. it a bit more. Yeah. Sure. But I understand the, the concept. That that's all that's needed. Yeah. If you understand it. I mean, Maybe not in practice, but the concept. I hear the concept of it. That, yeah, that, like I know, do get that we're all part of one con consciousness. Yeah. Absolutely, that's my belief. Yes. So, so advanced teachers, when they release data, can only can release data from themselves and affect others at the same time. You see. So, so um, in um, so, it's like when one connects to the source, the infinite power and light that radiates out. Um, Doc, Dr. Hawkins had a, had a great story, uh, and he was a, um, an enlightened 